Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Creeps, we have got a treat. It's not only spooky season. It's not only marching through the veil with Boris Karloff when TV was cool, and it was. I have got the czar of snacks. He is master of all spooky stuff. He and his good lady wife. They are the newly deads. Joel, please tell all the creeps where they can find you because you're in a lot of spots, brother. Hello, hello. Yeah, we are uh, happy to be back, by the way. Thank you. Uh, primarily, you can find us at thenewlydeads.com. That's the easiest way to, to find all of our you know happenings. Uh, we write uh, a movie review blog. We got a coffee review blog. We've got a small business blog. Uh, we've got our podcasts that we do. We've got uh, Dollar Store Drive-In, which is our flagship show that is on uh, uh, Tingler Television, Other Worlds TV, The Vortex, and my label mate here at the Monster Channel. Um, then we also have our YouTube channel, which has our Sinister Snacks, uh, as well as some like follow us around videos, unboxings, just kind of a little bit of everything. We try to have content uh, sometimes between five, six times a week, uh, which is a heavy lift, but when you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Amen. I tell you what, I discovered you through that dollar uh, dollar store drive-in. That's how I discovered you. And the, the snack videos are fun, but last year you had the Creeping for Code Orange. That thing blew up. You got big views on that sucker. I don't know. I mean, Code Orange is a big thing, and, uh, and I never realized exactly how big until we started kind of following it. This year, it's been a little bit on the down low just because, you know, things happen. Uh, but we, we love it. And uh, yeah, that was that was a shock to me, too. Yeah, it was it was huge, man. And congratulations on that. All right. We're looking. We decided to make this a double. This is food on the table and the doctors. I thought they were both fantastic. But before we jump jump into the episodes, how do you feel about this series in general? How do you find it yourself? Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Uh, after you asked me to come on, I went back and I watched uh, some of the other episodes. And it is right up my alley. I love, like, any any of the black and white from the 20s to, you know, the fifth, late 50s. Any of that stuff, especially Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi. Um, all that stuff just is, a like, a sweet spot. So as soon as that first episode started and he did the intro, I was like, yep, this is my jam right here. That's, that's the way it is, man. I was like, I can't believe there's this whole set, missing two episodes, but this whole set of Karloff that I've never seen. And I, I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. And before we jump into the meat of the matter, I also want to mention Joel is also a physical media cat. And he has got some excellent, like you've subscribed to Vinegar Syndrome. So you're getting these high end uh, editions of some really rare and some really cool movie so do go to the newly deads on youtube and check out his hauls because they are really good i love seeing what other people get i've got to catch up on your hauls but they are nicely done and you always get cool stuff it all kind of started with the the like the the low budget exploitation horror indie whatnot with uh the pieces blu-ray that came out and i just kind of i don't know it's it lit a fire and ever since then, I mean, people probably watch those videos and are like, doesn't he ever buy anything that's a little bit more like new release, big, big budget, you know, blockbuster stuff. But I love shot on video. I love stuff that is done on a budget. I love like, like the old stuff, especially, you know, the, the, the odds and ends. Like um, one of my favorite recent ones is um, uh, Flesh and Fantasy, which was an Edward G. Robinson uh, anthology film from the forties. And it, it, it kind of is a bit more about, it's kind of a bit more of a, like a, a romantic type of thing, but it's also like a horror anthology. And just from the time frame that it is, it just like, it's so good, but it's different from everything else. And it's just like little finds like that, where I'm always digging for gold. Um, yeah. and you just never know what you're going to find. And vinegar syndrome is, is kind of the, the, the kings of the castle when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I I uh, scraped together the finances. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to do it again, but it's been fun. It's been a good time. 
So you recommend it? You recommend it to the physical media creeps? As long as you're good with blind buys, and you trust the label, because I also did a, uh, a subscription to uh, TerraVision, which um, Brad Henderson and those guys are, are super nice. And they put out a lot of shot on video stuff, which is kind of a, a really niche. A lot of people don't dig it. But for me, uh, when I, I, I went to film school and when I was a kid, I used to make movies with my friends. And so it kind of takes me back to that time where it's, it's less about how much money you got and more about how much heart you have. Right. And so for me, I'd rather watch something that's really out there that like no Hollywood studio is ever going to make. Uh, if it's got somebody's heart and soul in it, you know, food on the table. What were your, what were your thoughts, my friend? You know, I, uh, I wasn't quite sure what to think. I was happy to see that Boris was, and I don't know to I haven't gotten through all of it, but I don't know if Boris is in every single episode or not, but all, all uh, but one, all but one so far. Uh, I think what, that's what I read. He, he was in all but one. I think that was the, Perhaps the very first one is not on my set. It's called the Vestris. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, I was happy to see him in there because I, I didn't, I didn't know honestly, you know, if he was going to end up being like a regular or not. Um, but it just, I, I think, really, what stood out for me was was Kay Stewart, who played his wife, kind of stole the show, in my opinion. It must have been a terrible experience. Um, and it felt kind of like it's a lot like the twilight zone but not not the twilight zone if that makes sense absolutely yeah I, when i'm trying to describe what it's like to people because people say well oh is this like and they compare it to like outer limits or something i say well not really it's kind of different and uh karloff as the captain i can't remember his name i'm bad with names edwards it's I think that it sounds right. It ca the captain is good, though. I mean, you know, the cap, the captain, but he looked like he did in Corridors of Blood. I don't know if you've seen that one. Oh, in my notes here, Captain Elwood. Yep, Elwood. Thank you so much. There you go. Good Lord, Captain. Everything's in order, sir. Thank you, Mister Elwood. And it, it, it was interesting because when I, I thought they were hour-long episodes, and then when I started watching it, I noticed they were like, you know, under half an hour or whatever. I was like. How much you're gonna squeeze into that amount of time? And being a fan of like EC Comics and the old like Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, it feels a lot like that, but kind of predating it. If that's a way to kind of look at it for people. Good to be back, Barney. This place is more like home to me than my own house. But yeah, it gets to the they get to the point quickly. Even Yoshi, who has a you know the kind of modern day short attention span, right? he enjoyed it and so i think it's kind of the perfect time for people that don't maybe don't have a lot of time if that makes any sense at all yeah and and these days it's kind of hard like i remember and i i, I tell the story kind of often i don't mean to, to diss on my my former sister-in-law but i remember um one time i asked her you know about what kind of movie she liked and i was like well, what about the old like black and white stuff you know the old like universal and she's like i can't watch them because i can't tell people apart you know, because it's in black and white, and I'm like, "What? Do you need <laughs> any color color movies or whatever?" Does I don't know. But nowadays, I think, like you said, it's it could be a little bit of you know, the uh, the attention span is not there. I know my kids sometimes don't really like watching it either. You know, they're 19 and 21, and they're right. kind of like, "Eh, you know, I'd rather watch something new." You know, but. I love it. And and these are very much uh, like morality tales is another thing I noticed, especially with when we get to the, the doctors, that it felt like there was an underlying kind of, um, I don't want to say religious per se, but it had kind of that tone where they're trying to teach you a lesson. Uh, again, back to like the EC comics or, or Tales from the Crypt, like that stuff. Great analogy. That's actually the perfect analogy, EC comics, because those stories were short to the point and because by the time in this episode now we're going to spoil it folks so if you don't want it spoiled please go stop now but uh <laughs> by the time it gets to the her ghost and it's they make it very clear it's her ghost right but it seemed quick i was like oh okay we're we're at the end of it already i wanted it to keep going i could have took a i could have easily took a movie length treatment treatment of the story things have been fairly quiet 
Well, and it didn't quite go where I was expecting because when she, you know, pulled the food off the table the first time, I'm like, I get it. You know, he's being a jerk. He's, you know, yeah. he comes back from this long voyage and would rather hang out with his buddies and swap tails. But then when she gets bitten by the snake, I'm like, oh, he's going to let her go. And then when he saved her, I'm like, okay, where are we going? Uh, and so then I'm like, he took took her on the ship and I'm like, isn't that bad luck? At least according to like old pirate lore or whatever. Maybe that's one too many Pirates of the Caribbean movies. But, uh, and then she died. I'm like, okay, now where are we going? And it was such a neat little plot device with the food on the table that it, it kind of, the first time you happened, it, it kind of caught you off guard. And then the second time you're like, okay, this guy's going to have a rough go of it because she is mad. Yep. And she had every right to be. Afternoon, Mrs. Alwood. Good afternoon. I'd uh, like a bottle of that Spanish wine that Captain Elwood favors. I think he'd enjoy it with his dinner. Be supper more than likely, ma'am. Club's having dinner in his honor. But I'll get it for you. He started out bad because he it was made very clear he married her just for the money, just so he could buy a ship. And yep. that didn't work out. So he because he's a rotten person, I guess, as these moral tales. If you're a rotten person, things will tend to not work out for you, I guess is what they're telling us. Right. Either that or she just really hates food and didn't want him to eat. <laughs> I mean, it looked like a good spread to me, but, you know, whatever. And then I thought that the, the young waitress was going to be involved somehow. Like, I thought maybe he was having a thing with her. And there was just a lot of little plot devices where you think it's going one way and then they go another way. Uh, and I, I appreciated that because especially with the time, you know, a lot of this stuff wasn't done yet or it was still kind of early. Nowadays, it's it's a trope, you know, it's an old hat. Uh, yeah. But then it was something new, it was something different. And uh, yeah, I just, I just had a really good time with that. You spy on me. I'll never do it again. But I wasn't spying, I swear it. I only wanted to get a bottle of wine for your dinner. And the table, was that part of your affection? That, that Captain Elwood was not a good guy. Yeah. And uh, maybe he meant well at some point, but he was so blinded by the fact that he wanted to be, you know, rich and wanted to be, you know, the, the best captain. And I thought it was kind of a neat, a neat kind of way of tying it up at the end. By You don't really see what happens to him, but they explain it to you. There's some uh, exposition that tells the rest of the story in a very truncated kind of way. And so yeah. it's a very satisfying ending that, you know, what he ended up on like the worst ship in, in the, the fleet. Aye, he finally got a ship, if you could call it that. No other master would sail her around the harbor. She leaked like a sieve and her crew. <laughs> I wouldn't sail with them across, uh, across a mill pond, but was all Elwood could get, so he took it. And then, I don't remember, I'm trying to remember if he, if the ship went down or if it got lost. I don't remember that. Uh, it just busted up. They said it just busted up all of a sudden. Oh. Which fell apart. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> she, may, she may have had something to do with that, too, which, you know. Have you heard? It's a Cobra Lee. The Cobra? That's Elwood ship. Aye, her crew has just been brought into the harbor. What happened? Nobody knows. They say that the weather was fair and the sea was calm. And suddenly she just broke up. Yeah, exactly, man. And for a, I would call these probably, Al Roach, a budget production, but it doesn't look exceedingly cheap to me. And I, it's TV, of course, you expect small sets. Right. But I never think, oh, this looks cheap or even like B, uh, B level. It just looks kind of bog standard early TV to me. Yeah. And I, I kind of wondered as I've been watching through it, which I am going to continue watching, by the way, just a heads up, nice. um, because it is it is hitting that sweet spot for me that makes me, you know, happy. Uh, is the beginning scenes with with Boris in front of the fireplace, which I see him behind you, you know, doing his thing. I'm wondering if they filmed all those at the exact same time, like they said, okay, here's all the intros, or if they did them separately, because he's wearing the exact same suit, and it looks like it's all they did it all at once. We may never know. Food on the Table is a great episode, folks. If you don't 
If you haven't seen it, they are on YouTube, but of course, the preferred way to get it is physical media. The Doctors, this was a really sweet story, I thought. A really, just a nice story. To a man referred to by the peasants of a tiny Italian village as Il Dottore. And, and speaking of uh, kind of having a budget and the TV thing, the, essentially this whole episode takes place in the, the main doctor's living room, played by Boris Karloff, and the, the, the house. And then there's a little bit of outside stuff, but not very much. So right. it's a very like small set. And I did not write down his name on this time. I just, the doctor and his son, I guess. Old doctor, but, young doctor. Right. And and <laughs> I I agree. This one was not quite as, it was less horror and more like just kind of, yeah, like I said, like sweet. And this is where I kind of got that slight religious overtone um, because, you know, here's this guy who is living in this small town and is so ingratiated with the community that he thinks of them like, and he wants to stay there and take care of them. And his son just doesn't understand. He's a big city doctor. And, um, you know, as soon as that, that, that is said, you're like, okay, something bad's going to happen. And I kept expecting that, like, the little girl that was involved was not going to make it. And it was going to be yep. because of his kind of hubris as a big doctor that he knew what was best and that it was something simple. Um, but again, I did not see the twist coming. No one gets any younger. Do you still permit them to bother you as much as ever? Bother me? Oh, I know these peasants. Every time they stub a toe, they yell for the doctor like children. Only worse, in my opinion. There's some excuse for children. Ah, they are like children. They frighten so easily. But the trouble is, one never knows how serious it may be. Yeah, I I thought exactly the same as you. I thought he was going to make a mistake because he was uh, arrogant and overconfident and something was going to happen to the girl. Maybe they're going to kill the young doctor or something, hang him or something. That's what I, what I was thinking. Oh. And, yeah. <laughs> and it went in a whole different a whole different direction. What are you going to do with him? I'm going to operate on the little girl. No. No, Senor Angel. You will not touch. We will wait for the doctor. Don't you understand how sick your child is? You will not touch her. Do as I say. Put that water on the fire. Of all the stubborn fools. And I, I guess we, we called that there's there's spoilers here. Yeah. That when the he so the, the little girl is, is dying, and like we said, we were concerned that maybe. She uh, had something simple that didn't require surgery that he was so quick to do. And when his dad shows up and is like, he's like, I got to do this. And dad's like, okay. You're like, why isn't he saying anything really? Why is he just kind of acting a little weird? Um, and he, I, I kind of thought like he was like, well, we'll just let him make his own mistakes. But I'm like, that doesn't seem like his character. Yeah. Um, and then when he finally gets back home and his dad's been asleep in the chair the whole time that raised all these questions in my head like okay so was that a spirit was that like an angel was that like some sort of just i, I don't know i mean i was curious to see what you thought as far as who that actually was senor angel get out i say you must not touch her i can't wait any longer you must not touch her stop you fool your child is dying one minute two minutes she'll be dead do you want her dead? Do you want to kill her? You just do it! You just do it! You just do it! Thank God you've come. Now, will you go? Well, I thought, because he was so... They kept saying how tired he was. He's overworked. He needs a vacation. He needs to rest. He's, you know, done, done too much for too long. I thought when he, he was so tired, he had scalded his hand, you know, he's, and so his, I guess, uh, maid or house woman, <laughs> I, I don't know what you call it. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't his wife, but yeah, there you go. Not, not wife woman not wife. makes him sit down in the chair and rest. He goes to sleep. So I thought he died in his sleep and it was his spirit that came. Cause he never, like you said, he is a good point. He never speaks. But you worry too much. Now you stay right there and rest, and I'll go finish the dinner. Giuseppe, take the car and go down the road. You may be able to pick them up before they get there. Yes, no. In any case, wait and bring Angelo back. And va bene. 
he just walks in, walks around, and because he's there, everybody is comforted and lets the young doctor do his job. So I thought he died in his sleep. That was my thought. Well, and there was a, a time when when it was initially happening that I'm like, maybe he, the character, the doctors, the old doctor was like, I'm realizing that there's a lot of stuff I don't know because I've been here so long that the medicine has moved on beyond my, my means. And I'm going to let him do this because he knows more than I do. Cause I didn't even diagnose it as, um, was it diphtheria? Yes. I think. Um, diphtheria. and so it's interesting cause I wonder if it would have been a stronger ending if when he got back to the house, they went to go wake up his dad who'd been you know asleep the whole time and his dad had passed right. away. If that would have been almost a stronger ending because then it sounded like in the kind of the epilogue that the doctor stayed, the young doctor stayed and kind of took over that role. Yeah, that's a great point. It, it may, yeah, it may well have been a stronger ending. You're right. Father, you look all in. You better go back with Giuseppe. I'll clean up here. It'll take some time. She's gonna be all right. What strikes me with these is the tone between each episode is so different. Yep. It's each episode is its own uh, tone flavor, I guess, for lack of a better <laughs> phrase. A tone flavor. I've never heard tone flavor before. It sounds like a rapper from the mid 90s. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, you know. I dare you. I dare you in your next snack review to say, this is a strange tone flavor. I'm going to be watching for it. And his first album, Lickety Split. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, having watched, you know, other episodes, I it, I agree with you. Definitely each one kind of has its own tone flavor. Um, and it feels like it's its own entity, but it also feels like it's part of this kind of ongoing series and I, I really wonder uh why why it didn't do better you know thank goodness you showed up when you did another minute and i've had to knock out that crazy bianchi to save his own child's life and when i saw the car was broken down and you had to come back through that storm i what's the matter didn't giuseppe bring you back no he never returned to the bianchis after he took you home i passed him a mile up the road why what's wrong Doctor hasn't been out. Not been out. Yeah, for sure. Because considering he went on to do Thriller and Colonel March. To be fair, I knew nothing about this until you did the uh, the unboxing on it and started talking about how you were gonna do episodes, and I got kind of excited because I'm like, I don't, I've never heard of this. Yeah. So again, physical media saves the day, uh, and thankfully somebody's out there trying to get these onto a format that we can see this. And I know it's on YouTube, but that doesn't mean it's going to be there forever, you know? Oh, for sure. For sure. And it's not the same. I'm sorry. It's not the same. I want to hold it in my hand and have it and put it, like Joel says, on the shelf. Yep. And that's where I want it. I want to be able to come grab it. I want a complete set. If, if, if a company out there makes a complete set, contact me, please, because I will buy it. And... You know, it's it's something I don't think people always understand. And in this day and age, it's kind of it's 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 weird because you you think you know it's on streaming, like oh I can watch that whenever. And then if they lose the licensing or the you know whatever happens, and all of a sudden it's gone. Or if it's like an episode where some sort of controversy happened or or something caused it to no longer be available, a lot of times it's gone for good or it's altered. And yeah. The only way you're going to see it is if you've got it on the shelf. And I mean, huge case in point is like the original Star Wars trilogy. Uh, I know it's a weird, a weird pull, but after they, Lucas went back and, and did his touch ups, it's like, well, why don't you make the original available too? Because there are some people that grew up with it that way and they want to see it that way. But unless you have the original like VHS tapes or you have a bootleg, it doesn't exist especially when you get into the stuff that I really like where it's homemade and, you know, DIY punk filmmaking. Like uh, a friend of mine made a movie and sent me a copy of it on DVD. It's never been released on Blu-ray. It's just kind of faded off into, exist into you know, not being in existence anymore because 
they made it and it didn't do what they wanted and they moved on in their life to do other stuff but it's a great movie and uh you know i'm so happy that i have a copy because if i want to go back and rewatch it it's out there now i don't i haven't looked recently but if you want to look it up the movie i'm referring to is the sphere of the lycanthrope and um it is a fantastic little uh werewolf movie that kind of has tinges of bruce campbell to it dr angelo did not as yet have this understanding what an episode's uh, both of us, I think, are encouraging everyone to go get this. It's it's worth owning. It's Karloff, and you probably have never seen it, and that's rare for people that are really into classic horror. It's, it's rare to find Karloff you haven't seen other than Targets. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, what's coming up for your channel, man? What have you got coming up in the next week or so? Um, well, I, we are currently in the process of we decided to take all the old Dollars for Drive-In episodes that, you know, we do a new episode every week. So whenever you watch it on any of the channels, it's always going to be a new episode. We don't do repeats. And I kind of realize that all those old episodes are sitting there and you can't watch them unless you saw them when they were first aired or some of them are, are starting to be available through Tingo Television. But um, now on Fridays, we're going to start doing Dollars for Driving Classic. So if people want to start from the beginning, the first episode will be coming out this Friday. And then every Friday forward, we're going to release a new episode. And that's in tandem with, you know, our unboxing and all the other stuff that we do. Nice, nice. And I have to say, uh, Joel and Laura are snack warriors. They are eating some wild flavored stuff. And some of it I wish I had. Some of it I'm happy to let you guys try it and tell me what you think. But uh, it all looks fun. It all looks fun. It's, it's a good time. And, and uh, she and I like spending time together. We like, you know, we, we, we kind of bonded over our love of, of snacks. And so it just kind of was a natural progression. Although I don't think I ever have to have the Larvettes again uh, because I, I'm not really a fan. I'm not Nicole Kidman. I don't have to eat bugs. Uh, I don't care if they're barbecue flavored or not. It's not my thing, but everything else beyond that, if you want a teaser, we have an upcoming episode uh, where we're doing a ramen, a, 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 you know, the cup of ramen, but it's uh, s'mores. Oh, you are a snack warrior, my friend. Check out the Newly Deads, the newlydeads.com. They got all kinds of, they're also artists. Do you want to talk about your art real quick? Oh, well, uh, yes, we are. We both uh, are artists um, and we do pop-up markets and things like that. We're actually going to be doing the uh, serial killer market here at Wolf Hollow in uh, December. And when they say serial killer, we mean like Freddy, Jason, you know, those kind of guys, but it sounds better to say serial killer market. Um, but yeah, uh, Laura does uh, pyrography, uh, watercolors. Um, we make ornaments. I do a lot of digital art, um, but I also paint. And we um, I actually just completed my, my work in progress. It took the last year. It is a, uh, a 11 by 14 print with a hundred different horror movie characters in it. Um, and for each one that's purchased, it comes with a list of all the characters, what they're from. And I've got enough that I'm going to be doing two more parts to it. So that's kind of my, my baby. Renaissance ghouls. That's what the newly deads are. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, Joel. I thank you for joining me for this. Everybody check out the newly deads, get some physical media, check out Joel's DVD hauls and I'm going to let Joel do the honors for this. Whatever you do in this life, whether it's good or bad, there's one thing you're going to have to do. And that is be easy. Please join me again for another journey into the world of the unexplainable, which lies behind the veil.